Today's video is going to be about the myths associated with the IELTS speaking examination. Via a mind map, I'm going to talk about the different aspects about which people are having certain myths and I'm going to burst them one by one. So let's check them out. All right, so we are on a screen, IELTS speaking myths. So in total, there are say like five myths which my, have student, which my students have asked me and I've seen few students having doubts. So the first one is gestures. So people have this doubt that they cannot use, they should use or they should not use gestures. They believe they should not be using gestures as uh, it might happen that the examiner would deduct their marks. No, it is not going to happen. Please, using gestures, it means your hand movements is a very common part of your day-to-day -day communication. It comes naturally. But yes, you your gestures should not be too loud. It should not be aggressive. So once you're using normal gestures, it is totally acceptable. The second one is clothes. Now, some people believe that when they're going for the IELTS examination, they should wear formals. While some people are having the approach that they can wear casuals as well. Well, people, there is no specified dress code for the IELTS speaking examination. If you are totally comfortable, you can wear your formals, else you can wear your casuals as well. As I have already mentioned, there's no dress code and you will not be penalized for your masks or bands because of your dress code. So it is totally acceptable. Third thing is your advanced vocabulary. So there are people who believe that if they use advanced vocabulary, they are going to get good bands or good marks. It is not the case. Well, obviously using advanced vocabulary is good. But if you are giving your answer and using advanced vocabulary, but the vocabulary is not fitting it in that sentence or using that vocabulary, it is becoming an open ended sentence. Like, for example, you want to say something, but the examiner is now getting something else because of the open nature of the sentence. So it can go against you. Why? If you're using simple vocabulary and you, the main idea is that your message should be delivered in the way you want it to be. So if the examiner is able to understand the message the way you want it to be understood then it's great then in that case advanced vocabulary has nothing to do with it all right and the next case is your four hands folded so people they are like you know people say that we cannot sit like this hands folded i'll definitely advise you not to sit like this do not fold your hands because it's a closed body language and a uh, lot of people are not comfortable with their close hands. But yes, there are few people who are very, very comfortable with it. So if you feel that you can sit in a very calm, composed and comfortable manner while crossing your hands, you can sit in that way. But if you really cannot, then please make sure, you know, your hands are on your laps, not on the table. Last thing is asking examiner questions. So should you ask the examiner questions or not? So what really happens is you can ask the examiner questions. If you don't understand anything, for example, if you do not understand a question, you can always ask the examiner, sir, could you please repeat the question? So it's totally acceptable. The examiner is not going to deduct marks for that. And last but not the least, when you're done with the examination and you wanted to discuss a question more, you can politely ask the examiner, sir, you asked me this question. So can I know something more about it? What were you really looking forward for? It? Yes, do not indulge in proper conversations with the examiner it's only related to the question so if you are getting this thing then you can ask your examiner else you should always try to avoid it so people these are the five myths people were students are basically having related to ask a speaking examination i hope all the myths are clear to you so if you like this video click like share it with your other friends who are paying for IELTS examination and if you want me to make videos on other topics related to IELTS, please feel free to write in the comment section and you can also watch my other videos in the different playlists. Till then, all the best for your examination.